man, we're going somewhere. All right, hold on, stop, stop. Hi, we're here on a not so warm Colorado day. We got a fresh dusting of snow, so it made us think about the snow cat. We've been snapping some bolts. They were holding up pretty well for the first few years. It's not really fun snapping bolts on the trail because then you potentially start losing your grousers and your track guides. And at the very least, you kind of got to stop and deal with it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start that process today. And to begin, we are going to be taking the tracks off so that we can take them all apart and then we can put them back together again. And we'll go ahead and take you through the process. Where it's put together here with the splice, we need to get it to a point where we can actually access all the bolts without crawling completely under there. So we're gonna move it back to here in this little gap between the tires uh, so we can access those bolts and get it split apart. Fortunately, on the other side, it's already lined up, ready for us to get it off. So we will get that done. So we gotta take all these nylocks off to get these guides off so we can split the rubber apart and get these tracks apart. So we'll go ahead and do that. All right, now I gotta jump to the inside and do those too. Here we go. to grab a half inch swivel head ratchet wrench to be able to loosen these up a little bit so we can get them to pivot up and get the socket in there. You can see it's quite the range of motion. Now we just go ahead and pop these guys off. Take one of them here. And try to start prying some of the rubber up. actually been able to uh, use a sprocket to pull it off for us but the hard part is that the other side's going to want to drive too. We're just gonna try to back it up and see what happens. So here we go. Oh man, we're going somewhere. You have to use the uh, steering. It's just spinning. There you go. Yeah, that's working great. Suffer. Looking good, keep going back. All right, hold on, let me see where the splice is. Uh, it's good right there. So we're gonna cheat a little bit and try to use the snowcat to drive the track right off of the top of the tires. We'll see how it goes. All right, hold on, stop, stop. Go backwards a little bit. Move this up. 
bunch up. Good, good, okay. Go ahead and come forward now. Yep. Alright, hold on. Alright, keep coming. Hold on. Keep coming. Good, keep going. Stop, hold on, hold on, stop, stop. Back up. Alright. Okay, go for it. Stop. Okay. Go forward. We're done. We're good. There we have it. And our next step is going to be removing all the track guides, separating them from the grousers, and then separating the rubber from the grousers as well so we can take all the carriage bolts out and replace them. One thing that we noticed once we got this all apart though was that some of our guides that were homemade because we stretched tracks uh, actually have been coming into contact with something if you can see here. This one's got a lot of wear compared to some of the other ones that don't have any wear, mostly the inner ones, as you can see. We actually made a different style here and it seems to be working really well. But what that's been rubbing on, if you come over here and take a look, we're having some contact with the inner bevel of this flange here with the guide and some of the axle tube here. That's obviously a problem, and so we are going to have to redesign those homemade track guides to avoid that issue in the future. All right, we're about to start taking her apart. Uh, it's gonna be a long process. guides off it's real cold dark and windy so we're gonna call it a night for today so now we have to remove all the carriage bolts from the grousers which is about 880 of them between the two tracks so this ought to be fun <laughs> so we're trying out a little bit of a different method here see if it works any better but so far it's going to be a really slow process the other part of this process is going to be removing all the bolts which sometimes it's not bad other times it's going to require some tools pliers sometimes they want to come out one way or the other getting lucky so far
So we need to remake a bunch of these track guides from this style, which was homemade, to this updated version, which is also homemade. Uh, the reason being that these were a little tall, as you can see, they were contacting some things. And it also made it really hard to get to the bolt that's inside of here. So we've been kind of mulling through the process of how to mass produce a bunch of them because there's probably about 60 of them. Uh, and what we've kind of figured out, which is subject to change as we go, is basically we are take a square tube. We're going to cut a wedge into it like this. After that, we'll go ahead and drill a big hole right in this area with a hole saw. Kind of step it up as we go, obviously. And then after that, we can go ahead and cut the bottom of the tube off. And at that point, we will also cut these off right here. We'll take the whole back piece off. And then this new piece will get welded in right there, the front staying and getting welded to this side right here. So. We'll go ahead and show you the process. The plan was subject to change. And now that we've made quite a few of these, um, as you can see here, basically it's been a very painfully slow process and it's time to change the plan. We saw some pictures on the internet of a guy who made a custom uh, jig or press, but basically he figured out how to turn a piece of flat steel into this funny shape right here like they did originally. So we went ahead and reverse engineered that and we're gonna make one of those today in hopes of speeding up the process for ourselves. We're gonna use some pieces of scrap that we had laying around conveniently. Some of it's gonna be some 3 8 inch plate. We're also gonna use some half inch diameter round stock as well as some 3 quarter inch diameter round stock here. So we're going to go ahead and start getting that all cut up and we'll show you the process of making this thing. the slide mechanism all tacked together so let's start welding it up. So as you can see we got some progress made on this jig here. Just about happy with where we've got them. Got the back plate mounted to the base plate, the bottom dies, and the upper die roughed into the slider piece. We went ahead and gave it a test just to see what we got with it. And we're pretty close to what we want. However, there are a couple details that we still need to work out. One is we're not getting the rolled top section like this one has. So that we'll need some modification to this and this most likely. Uh, the other issue is that it's not leaning back like the original was. So we're gonna have to take a wedge off of the bottom here to get it to lean like that. Uh, but other than that, we're pretty happy with it. So I'll go ahead and finish welding the rest of this out and start figuring out the modifications after that. We got the jig fine tuned for these track guide pieces that we've been trying to replicate double convex shape on. As you can see, it took a little bit of fine tuning. We had to put some extra weld on the top piece and shape it as well as the bottom piece. But we finally achieved the results that we were after virtually the same shape as the factory came up with there. We also figured out the shape of the plates to cut before pressing them. 
And we had our good friend Tom at Fire River Racing cut a bunch of them out on his CNC plasma table. Helped us out a ton, saved a ton of time. We appreciate it, Tom, thank you so much. As you can see, we have a number of extra ones here. Figure we might want some extra. Also figured some other people could potentially need some of these as well. Whether you want just these pieces and you DIY it, cut the old one off, weld a new one on, or we can also do the whole thing as an assembled unit for you. Feel free to let us know if that's something that would interest you. Reach out, we'll be glad to help you out. I'm gonna go ahead and start pressing a bunch of these out, get as many done as possible, get them welded to the bases, and hopefully get these tracks back together. We had to make a tool to press out the shape that the original ones were. We're going to continue with this style from here on forward. As you can see, we got a bunch of these made, so we're going to go ahead and start putting one of the tracks back together. Pretty decent start on replacing a lot of these bolts from grade 5 to grade 8. These are the grade 5s, they're silver. We still have to remove all of those before we can replace them. The grade 8s are all black. We also got these track guide replacement pieces put on while we were doing that, some of them anyway. So yeah, we're going to have some more help with this tonight with some of our friends. So it's a new day here with Brothers Fab and Adventure. We stayed up late last night and got a lot of work done with our friends. Uh, we got all the guides done with the new grousers and new bolts on this track. On this track, we got it completely stripped down and ready for reinstallation of all the guides and grousers with the new bolts. So we're just establishing the width between the track guides here before we can roll them all out.
Yet another day of track work. This time it's snowing. I said it was snowing earlier, but it's really snowing now. We're making some all right progress, but we sweep this track off numerous times and it just keeps getting covered. Got all our bins covered to keep them from getting filled up. We got to work tomorrow, so we're going to push as far as we can today. that thing pretty rough good thing we got a replacement eh yeah that whole tooth was about to rip off and so we got the new sprockets installed on the hubs again and we're gonna go ahead and grease them up and reinstall them on the snowcat. All right, pull back on this. Gotta be pretty much 60. Got a few holes lining up. Um, I think pretty close. Oh, damn. I think she's tight. Uh, 
you think we could just hook it up to the truck? And pull it forward? So we made some progress yesterday. We got the new sprockets installed and the tracks partially reinstalled. As you can see here, the sprockets are looking pretty nice. We got these ratchet straps on the front here to try to pull the tension axle forward so that we can release the grease that is in the tension ax, uh, the tensioners rather. So you can see the fitting there, it's covered in grease. That'll allow us to get enough slack to get the track back together at the splice. I hear it. Oh. Alright, we got the new sprockets on, the tracks reinstalled and partially tensioned. We're going to move the snowcat a little closer to the garage, check the tire pressures, do a final tension, and replace a broken fan switch. Other than that, we're going to get the trailer ready and we'll be out on the trail next thing you know it. I'm basically going to keep an eye on the track tension as he drives it here to kind of get an idea where we're at to begin with.
important thing we got to do before we hit the trail though and that is put our registration stickers on let's go right there 